Hi everyone, QuickSight is uh, a Tableau Looker type of product from AWS and probably one of the biggest benefits is that it's uh, one of the products offered by Amazon so it integrates really well with the databases you already have in the system. So first thing you do is you go to the right, click on Manage QuickSight, add your users in here and you're going to want to go to VPC connections to connect to your databases. After that you're asking what kind of databases can you connect to? Pretty much anything. I'm going to use a sample data set here that comes with QuickSight for demo purposes. Okay, the first screen, so you've just connected to your database. and you take a look at the data. Um, if there is a table you need to join, you just can add data, and you add the table in here, and then you would just connect them, the IDs to the both tables to make it join. And then in here, uh, the very first time when you import the data, you're gonna want to rename the fields. Um, these fields look pretty good, but most of the time you're gonna get databases with a lot of underscores. So name them something readable so that your stakeholders um, see something nice on their graphs. Okay. Let's start creating some visuals. In QuickSight, graphs are called visualizations. From an aesthetic point of view, usually I like to do about three graphs per row. I find it's a good uh, medium for um, looking at a dashboard on a laptop but you can easily do two graphs or for more complicated graphs like a scatter plot you probably should use just one graph per row and when you get an email your daily emails or your monthly emails um, it will be responsive so you would only see this in a one column view okay let's do this really quickly so right off the bat this is called autograph, which means you can just start clicking on fields and graphs will be created for you automatically. That's revenue, that's cost, let's do goals. So if you're just doing something really simple, quick little project, um, you'll use Autograph, but the more you use QuickSight, the less you'll want to use Autograph because there really aren't that many graphs um, to select from and you'll know exactly what you want once you're more familiar with the system. I like to start off my dashboards with the sheet that uh, people use the most. In this case, uh, the data is on a monthly basis, so month is usually the best tab um, to look at. And then I'm going to create quarter and year after this. Okay, so that's just the basics. And of course, what you want to do is to dig and slice and dice into this data and look at the deltas. And that's where the power of QuickSight comes in with calculated fields. This is uh, the formulas of the uh, Excel formula equivalent of QuickSight. So you can really do some incredible types of calculations um, and dig into your data without having to ask the developer or DBA to create another column in the table for you. You can actually do it yourself. So that's another one of the powerful features that QuickSight has. We're going to do some easy formulas first, and then I'm going to show you a very complicated formula at the end. So you have an idea of what you can do. Profit, revenue minus cost. Let's see how close we are to matching revenues to our goals.
Okay, let's create two more graphs here. One, two. And we're going to use date and profit. And then, oops, sorry, I need to do profit. Profit. Now, this one will do date and revenue goal match. So you can see there's a period of time in 2014 where we did not match our revenue projections. Um, this is a lot of data to show four years worth of data on one sheet. You're probably more interested in the last six months, so let's do that. Create a filter. Apply to all visuals on this sheet. Top six months. There you go. Okay, so you're asking, those formulas I just showed you are really simple. Can we do something more complex? Let's do it. When I'm working with complex formulas, I like to create a pivot table first so that I can kind of debug what I'm going for. In this case, I actually didn't need a pivot table, but it's okay. Um, Let's do something that um, I found I use quite a lot when I'm building dashboards. It's picking an arbitrary number in a cell and applying some mathematical formula to another arbitrary number. In this case, you know, business folks love seeing three months differences, four months differences, six months differences. So I'm just going to do this number here, the last number that we have in our system, and let's take a look at that minus that, so a three month revenue difference. What do we have? So, looks like it's gonna be approximately 320,000. Okay, so let's build the formula out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the last date on the system. Most of the time when you're building your um, formulas, you're going to be using now, the function now, which is today's, or which is the current date and time, because you'll have date data that's up to the current day, hopefully. Um, but in this case, I only have data, data till 2016, so I'm going to make that the last date. And here is the magic formula. Revenue, three month change. So we have two lines to do something that takes way more than two lines. It's okay. Um, I'll explain this. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm going writing an if-else statement, check the date in the row, and see if it's equal to the last date. If it is, show the revenue, otherwise zero it out. And the reason why I'm summing it is because there will be multiple rows, in this case in my data set, there are multiple rows with date is equal to last date um, based on you know company, based on all the different cohorts. So I'm going to sum up all those revenue numbers because I want a total. And then if you can imagine you have that number and you're subtracting the number from three months ago, how do we isolate that? We use if else and we use this function called date diff. So as you're kind of imagining your needs, look for the right function in this function list and hopefully you find what you need. Most of the time you, you do. Um, oftentimes, I think the hardest part is to think of the formulas as how do you manipulate these rows in this column, zero out the ones you don't need, keep the ones you do, and then um, do something with the rest that are, that are in the column. So let's say you had, um, I'm summing up everything uh, with the revenue number and that date. If you just wanted a cohort of customer name is equal to Warner Brothers, or if the channel is web instead of mobile, you would just add that in the if-else statement just to isolate what you're looking for. Great. 
And a lot of these complicated formulas can be expressed with a very simple graph called the KPI graph. Revenue, three months, 320,000. There you go. Okay, so let's build out quarter and yearly. Oops, my bad. Enter. Enter. Oh no, I have to do all that work again from month. All this work I did in month, I have to reproduce in quarter? Of course not. Quarter. Handy dandy duplicate. Once you figure out, you know, once you figure out a difficult problem, whether it's a graph or whether it's a did I duplicate on the wrong sheet. What happened? Oh, um, whether you've you can duplicate um, a graph or a formula. You know, once you figure out a hard problem, you know you can easily reproduce it. That's one of the fun things you can do with these graphs. So I'm going to change the aggregation of the date to be quarter. You can see here Q3, Q4, and if I just wanted the for this year, I would just add a filter to get this year's quarters. Revenue for the last couple of years. Oh, sorry, got to change the aggregation date. Day the year. There you go. So that's how you can build some basic graphs, and I want to teach you guys how to use parameters and actions. They're not the most obvious name features, so that's why I want to do a quick demo so you know how to use them. Okay, um, I find that salespeople like to drill down on, well, let's just call this company select. They like to um, be able to look at companies that they've already closed or look at companies that are similar to the ones that they're after uh, to see if they can find data that's useful to them. So if that's the case and you want to create a sheet where your stakeholders can actually start um, narrowing down on a specific cohort, whether it's company or it's channel, um, parameters allows you to do that. So I'm just going to do some quick graphs here. Date and revenue. Whoops, sorry. Let's see what I do wrong here. Date. Date and profit. Let's do date and revenue goal match. And I guess the last one I'll just do date and cost, oh yes, and it would be helpful to add company to all these graphs as well because we're going to be isolating these graphs based on companies. So you'll see when I do this off the cuff, all the companies are listed. That's where we create a handy dandy parameter. Company select. Give it a default of none. Otherwise, well, the default is all, which is not what you usually want. It might confuse the, the stakeholder. I'm going to create a filter on the company customer name. Applies to all visuals on this sheet. It is a custom filter that equals a parameter that we just created called company select. And we are almost done. So you can see um, all the graphs are cleared out, but then your question to me is, okay, well, how do I actually pass in 
How do I select or pass in the company I'm actually interested in? Add control. Select company. There you go. You can actually then select any company you want. Entertainment 14. Here are all the graphs for Entertainment 14. Now the last feature I want to show you is actions. What are actions? It's kind of a generic name and documentation isn't the best on when and how to use actions, especially it's one feature I'm going to show you that took me a long time to figure out. So I'm going to call this company rankings. So this is one way I found using actions to be pretty useful. Just having a list of um, different ways to look at a cohort. In this case, it's company. So I'm just going to do a table on customer name and revenue, order descending. So actions allows you to select any of these companies and it will jump to this page and populate that parameter. Now what you have to remember is to copy the URL, go back to your rankings page, click on actions, to find a new action, name doesn't really matter, it's a URL action. The name of the parameter we created earlier was called company select. And this is the part that took me that was not obvious in the documentation. The documentation will mention like a plus. You're looking everywhere for a plus, but it's actually right here. And that's and you have to like it's not intuitive that you have to use these this type of syntax to pass in that parameter. But let's see if it works. Save. I'm interested in looking at STA5. And STA5 populates. There you go. And of course, you can easily duplicate this ranking. Let's look at these companies from a different vantage point by profit. And most of these line up, but you notice that STA9 is a lot more profitable than STA5, even though STA5 makes more revenue. So you take a look at that. And if you want to be more fancy, you could have um, two company selects. But um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. All right, you're happy with everything you've done. So you publish your dashboard. Call it um, Business Review Dashboard. Add all the users that you want into the system that you want to give access to this dashboard. That's fine. And also, you can actually also um, set a daily email or a weekly email or a monthly email to go out as well. And when your users, oops, sorry, my bad. When your users actually see the dashboard, what they'll see is this. So you, they don't have all those graphs and fields that you use to actually create this dashboard. They actually see the finished product, which is just the data. Of course, you probably want to take out the debug table, or maybe I'll leave it in a quarter. Company rankings, company select. Um, yeah, so.